Hello, friends. Today I'm going to read Clink to you. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoy the book. I'm going to start off this year. I'm going to share my screen and hopefully I can find the screen that has the picture of Clink in it. And I don't see it, of course. Last time this happened too, and I don't know why. There we go. All right, share the screen. Here's Clink, and here we go. Um, the name of the book is Clink. He's a robot, obviously, but notice something interesting down here. See, it says manufactured by Kelly DiPuccio and Matthew Myers. Have you ever seen a book that said manufactured by? Usually it says written by. Kind of weird, huh? Okay, well, here we go. As far as robots go, Clink had his fair share of problems. He was rusty. Even his dust had rust. He was squeaky. Even his creaks made squeaks. And he a day didn't pass without something falling off. Plink, pop, bing! But the problem that made Clink's dials droop, drop, and his circuits short out was nobody wanted an old robot. He didn't have cool retractable arms like Zippy. See his alarms? He didn't have fancy attachments like Blade. Woo, look at Blade's fancy attachments. And he didn't know the first thing about doing homework and baking chocolate chip cookies like Penny. You can see Penny do her do homework and bake cookies at the same time. The world, it seemed, was no longer interested in a robot who had been programmed to play music and make toast. When people came into the store, they marveled at Zippy's ability to pick up dirty laundry and play baseball at the same time. When Clink tried to do the same, everybody just laughed. It's no fun to laugh when people get laughed at, is it? Every day, Blade wowed the customers, snipping and shaping one-of-a-kind hairstyles. When Clink showed off his clipping skills, the results were usually disastrous. And when children lined up around the store to sample one of Penny's warm chocolate chip cookies, nobody, not even the store mice, seemed interested in Clink's dry toast. At night, when the store was closed for the evening, the other robots tried their best to keep Clink's spirits up. Penny gave him cookies, Blade gave him a makeover, and Zippy gave him a pair of underpants. He meant well. See the underpants and the makeover and their cookie there? They were really trying to be good friends. One by one, Clink watched his friends go home with happy families. He hadn't been programmed to cry, but somehow he leaked rusty tears every time. And when something inside that old robot broke, and he simply switched off his speakers and gave up. So sad. Many weeks later, a young boy came into the store. It was the same boy who'd stopped by every week to look around, but never bought a thing. Nevertheless, the proud shopkeeper always welcomed an opportunity to show off his brightest and best new robots. Behold, the amazing Colossal Bot. See that big boy right there? That's the Colossal Bot. Too big, said the boy. Twinkie. Too pinky, said the boy. Bongo, bongo. Too bouncy. Woo. Nothing the shopkeeper showed him was just right. The boy was about to leave when Clink heard the happy hum of music. Suddenly, the squeaky gears in his head began to turn again and he got an idea. Clink stood up tall, brushed off the dust and cobwebs, and belted out a head bopping, toast popping, show stopping tune. The song was old fashioned and crackled with static, but there was pure joy in every note. The boy turned around. The old robot had never danced before, but now he was twisting and twirling, knocking over boxes and toppling displays. At last, Clink had caught someone's eye, but then, Clink, pop, ping! A rusty spring hit the young customer square in the forehead. The music stopped. If robots could blush, Clink would have turned a hot shade of fire engine red. Oh, 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 so sorry, cried the shopkeeper. I've never seen him act like this before. Wait, said the boy. May I see him first? This troublemaker? Shopkeeper handed Clink to the boy. He's very old and he's missing parts. The boy's eyes lit up. He's perfect. 
I'm perfect, thought Clink. It had been a very long time since anybody had thought he was perfect. Clink smiled. Click pop. The boy ducked. I'll take him. And so as far as robots go, Clink had his fair share of good luck too. He went home with his new friend, Milton, who, as it turns out, likes burnt toast and is great at fixing things and loves to dance. So there we go, the story of Clink the Robot. Stop sharing now. So you guys, you can walk, check out the book Clink yourselves. And I think one of the neatest things about this book is any page you turn to, you can see different things about the robots. You can see little pictures, different things in the pictures that you can look for and see. Every time you read it, you can see something new and different. So I hope you enjoyed the, the book and I hope you enjoyed listening. Thank you so much for joining me, friends. And you guys take care. We'll see you next time.